What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Austin and today I'm going to be covering part three of the three part series on how to build the factory. Now I recently released uh, uh, the part one and part two videos. So if you haven't seen how to build the system control and how to build the crafting module, you're going to want to watch those before you watch this one. Uh, as they have a lot of information that I'm not going to cover here today. Uh, so, and then as a reminder that this is, of course, the beta version of the factory, a lot of testing going on with this. Uh, I've already made some pretty significant updates for version two. Uh, example, this whole thing here in version two is now gone. Uh, but we're going to do this tutorial just for, you know, the history of it so we can see where this uh, this whole thing originated from. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just connect everything up uh, or just show you how to connect everything up and then we're going to run it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to connect the crafting module here to the uh, to the system control over here. And since it is, 90, is it is entirely wireless as far as like control goes, the only thing you actually need to do is connect your buffer box, uh, the output of your buffer box. You might have uh, one of these storage adapters if you would combine these pipes over there. Uh, but whatever you did uh, from your storage adapter, just do the output of one of them to this, uh, what I call the check conveyor. Um, there's two here because uh, in the in the proof of concept video, I had two two of these crafting modules running at the same time for 16 items. In this example, I'm only building one, obviously, for the tutorial. So just pick one of these. Doesn't matter if you built this exactly as I have it. And then the output of that is going to run to your termination box, and that's just going to be wherever it is your final spot is that you're sending the where you want the system to to put all the stuff that's crafting. Note that. You know the industrial out here could go you know this could run to your own sorting system this could run to your own sorting system uh whatever but this is just where i'm gonna have it the system um, populate all the stuff that i want that i want crafted uh so once you've done that uh we're gonna have to set up all the blueprints uh of what we're gonna craft and so I've of course already done that. We're just going to cover it is what I've done and I've chosen some very specific uh, specific examples uh, just to kind of highlight a few things that you should know. So you're going to pick the items that you want to craft and you're going to need of course to create blueprints for those items here. I have them on the top here. Uh, and then you're also going to have to craft an, a single item of each blueprint to put in the output. This must be here. You must have these in the output. The system requires them to run uh, at all times, and it will maintain these here for you after you've done it the first time. Same thing on the bottom. I have four blueprints here, uh, and I have chosen and I've crafted the each item for the items above. It doesn't actually matter like where this is, you know, where this is, it doesn't matter at all. I just do this and I highly encourage you to do this uh, because uh, it helps to stay organized with what you're crafting. So the order of this AK to Python, uh, the order of this mask to 8X scope is the same as these. This is the mask to the scope. This is the AK to the Python. It just helps to keep things organized because you do need to know where these are in relation to these, which we're of course, uh, going to talk about here in a moment. Something to note is that the the crafters run concurrently. So the green top one and the yellow set on the bottom, they are they are duplicates of one another. It's just so that, you know, basically when this thing starts crafting, this thing also gets a signal to craft. They might not each need to craft something, so they won't. They'll individually do what they have to do. But these do run in tandem, uh, which you'll see once we get this thing going. So once you've set up your blueprints, the next thing you need to do is uh, program the conveyors over here. Uh, so we're going to start with the output conveyors, which are these ones here on the right. And these are simply set up to take, you know, the items that you have listed, the blueprints that you have set up in your your uh, your industrial crafter, those items, they're set up for these items here. So this top one goes to the green ones. So again, the order I showed you with down there with the blueprints, the top one here is the mask. The next one down is the bolty, followed by the, uh, the rocket launcher and then the 8X scope. And so all you have to do here is place your item in here, not the blueprint version, obviously, and then you're gonna set the max value. And for most items, you're gonna set the max value to two. And now what this is gonna do is whatever whatever uh, value you put here in the max uh, input box, uh, that is gonna determine how many uh, buffer items the system puts into this buffer box. So it's gonna, it's gonna try and maintain two of each item with the exception of the rocket launcher, which I'll talk about. 
in this box and that's by design the system this part of the system only cares about this box and then this part of the system pulls from that box so it's so the whole system is essentially reactive around this particular box on purpose which we'll talk about about later so you're going to set that max value to uh two i recommend two i do not recommend buffers bigger than two you don't need to do that uh, that, that, that increases the scan timers way over there. You have to really, really jack those up to do this, which we don't want to do. Uh, and so set your buffer to two for everything except for the uh, rocket launcher. And the reason I did that, and I specifically included the rocket launcher paired with, you'll discover here in a moment, the MP5, is because the MP5 has a craft time of 30 seconds and the rocket launcher in the, despite saying 30 seconds is 60 seconds uh, to craft in a tier three workbench. So I set that to one because, and, and we'll talk about timing, the system can't handle three rocket launchers when the timing of it is, is calibrated for an MP5. So I did that on purpose uh, and we'll talk about why that's relative. And you could set the system up to do two rocket launchers as a buffer. You could totally do that, but I'm just showing you, it's just an idea, a way to show you uh, how you can, how everything's relative to what you're crafting. Uh, so, and that's all you have to do. The other thing to make sure with these is that the filter mode down here has to be set to any item. That is the default setting. So as long as you don't change this, it won't matter. Uh, you're gonna make sure that you set that to all of these. All the outputs have to have a filter mode of any item. Uh, the next one that you're gonna do is the uh, input conveyors over here. And these ones are what pull in the, the resources from your your uh, resource area, your materials boxes, and they are paired to the conveyor over here. And so uh, this conveyor is the mask, it is paired with this conveyor on top. So they, you know, they're one to one across the green top to the green top, those are pairs. The second one down, the bolty here is the second one down here. So make sure that you know that you're setting the right one. And this is just gonna be the recipe for the item you're crafting. So this is the 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 recipe to craft a metal face mask. And you'll notice that the, the max value is set to 50, 15, and six. That's the specific recipe. And you wanna make sure that this is set to require all. It is critical that all of the conveyors on the left here, all of the input conveyors, the filter mode must be set to require all because you do not want the system to say maybe you're out of leather. You don't want the system to be like, well, I have high qual and I have sewing. And since they said, you know, any item, uh, I'll put just those two in. If it puts in partial ingredients, it'll break it and you'll have to reset it. So make sure this is set to require all for every conveyor on the left side. And other than that, it is simply just whatever the, whatever you need to craft this, you put in here and set the max values to the specific numbers because you want it to be exact, the exact recipe so that it only puts in exactly what you need and that's it and no more. And if, and if you're missing something like a spring, it cancels the whole thing, which is great, which means the system will just essentially skip it, which is what you'd want until it'll keep scanning for it, but it won't build it unless it gives, unless you provide it with the necessary uh, materials. Obviously you're gonna need your supply boxes. Uh, the input to the system is right here for the crafting module. So it doesn't matter. Whatever it is you wanna do with your materials boxes is up to you. Um, I just set up this sort of generic one. So uh, it's just an example. Um, it just has stacks of the items that I need in here uh, to build stuff. And so you would set up something, this could be your sorting system or whatever. This The system just has to be able to see everything it needs uh, to craft the items that you're telling it to craft. The thing I will tell you is that using the AK as an example, like the AK is this top one I think over here, uh, that one is, it requires 200 wood. So conveyors will only take 60 items per stack at a time. And so if you only had, for instance, one stack of wood, it's gonna it's gonna transfer in here to this, when it's if it's trying to build an AK, it's gonna transfer in 60 wood and then 60 more, so 120, and then 60 more, so 180, and then finally 200. You want it to do all 200 at once. So you need to make sure that you have enough stacks because the conveyor will source, if it needs 200, it'll source 60, 60, 60, and then 20, you know, and then what is that? That's 60, 120, 180, and then 20 out of that one, all at the same time. So if you have situations where you are, you're seeing items come into your industrial crafter, but they're not what you set your filter stuff to be for the recipe, it's probably because you don't have enough stacks for it to pull. Um, one thing I did notice once was that I had an empty box in this chain, like I had the, everything in three, and sometimes it wasn't pulling it, it was like glitching. I don't know if that's had anything to do with that, uh, but I always make sure that whatever the source boxes are that the system's looking at, 
each box at least has something in it, right? Um, so that so that it, it for you know if you if you see that issue and one of your boxes is empty, that could be the problem. The last thing you have to do over here is you got to set your check conveyor. Uh, we're going to talk about what the check conveyor does when the system is running. But as far as setting it up, all you have to do is set it to the things that you are crafting. Uh, make sure that the filter mode is any item. So the default, do not put it as require all. You don't want that. Uh, and this is how you determine how much you want the system to maintain. So I have this set to six items each, which means it is the, the whole point of this thing is gonna, it's gonna try and keep this box full of six of each of the items that I have dictated over here. So whatever you want the system to do, uh, this is where you're gonna set it. The higher the number, the more it has to work and so forth. So, you know, I just did six as an example, but if these were say three of each, it's gonna have an easier time keeping up with you if you're, you know, say constantly dying and need more weapons and need more weapons. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a trade off between, you know, how, how long do you want it to have to work? Assuming it has to go from empty all the time. You know, once this thing is set up, if you're not emptying this box down to zero, the system's not gonna have to repopulate your entire inventory of stuff each time you use it. It'll usually be one or two at a time, which the buffer box can handle for you. And you'll never notice uh, the time it takes to craft because it'll give it to you from the buffer. And again, it's reactive. And so then the system will rebuild for the buffer first before this thing is repopulated. So, uh, and, and it works really well. I found that this seems to work fine, but you know, of course you, you do you. Uh, one thing before we start, a uh, huge, huge uh, change. If you saw the uh, two part, the crafting module video, um, I had said to set these up where I had set this left one to 0 0.25 and the right one to three. I discovered that that actually has the potential in the just sort of perfect storm moment that it could cause a problem. So I changed this and now I have each one set to 0 0.25 on the right and uh, seven seconds on the left. Uh, and that's the same for all of these, 2, 0 0.257, 0 0.257, 0 0.257, and so forth. Uh, in the beta version, you know, you have to do this. In the updated version two that I'm working on, this is actually gone. I've figured out a much better way to do this, uh, but just for continuity, of course, we're gonna cover it in this video. So the last thing we have to calibrate is the uh, system control. And this one can be a little bit confusing. And so uh, the step one is you have to know, and if you've, if you've built this whole thing, then you will probably know which one's associated with, but you have to know which of these timers is associated, and I'll turn these on over here, which of these timers is associated with which set of conveyors. So uh, the easiest way to do that is to just know, note the frequencies. So again, we have this on frequencies of 10, 20, 30, 40, off is 11, 21, 31, and 41. And so each one of these conveyors over here has two uh, receivers uh, set up to it. And one is the on receiver and the other is the off. And so when, it, when this one receives the on frequency of 10, it'll turn this thing on. Uh, and then it won't receive this one. This one is skipped for this particular cycle. The rest of these will see will receive off. So if you built it like I did, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, as far as the on goes. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, as far as the on goes. And that, and that just corresponds with this row for the green ones and this row on the back for the yellow ones. And they're both set to the exact same frequency. So this is 10, that's 10, this is 11, that's 11 and so forth. So knowing that this is 10, 20, 30, 40 for the on frequencies, you can come over here and say, okay, well, this timer on the left here, the blue ones, that's the blue frequencies, that's 10, it's on is 10, the rest are off. So this is that top that top conveyor over there on the right. Whereas this purple one is, uh, the, the on is the second one, so 11, 20. That's the one underneath it down there. That's the second one down from the top and so forth. The green is the third one down because the on is at the 30 position and the orange is the fourth one down because the on is the 40 position. Note, this is a little confusing, uh, that how I build these, it turns out, I never thought about this. They cycle this way. The thing cycles this way. Uh, but because of the way these are laid out, these go 10, 20, 30, 40 down, which means the system technically runs this direction. So these actually turn on going up instead of down like I would have, you know, you might intuit. So not a big deal, but just be aware of that. So once you understand where these things are and, and how they're, they're linked, being that this is, of course, like I said, the top one, uh, then you just have to know what it is the top ones are building. So this top one here is the face mask. This top one here is the AK. And so if you notice in here, we have the face mask 
and we have the AK. Uh, that's that's all, you, you just have to know what the, the crafting time is. And so you're gonna set these timers based on one, the item of the pair that has the highest crafting time. These are both 45 seconds. So, and you have to note that with a buffer of two and one to craft for the industrial crafter, that's three items. The system could, at a given time, need to craft three, not every time, but if it needed to, this timer must run long enough for three of those things to craft. And not, not six, but just three pairs. So at 45 seconds, that would be 45, 45, and 45. So that's 135 seconds. You can't set it for 135 seconds because the it, you know, because the game it updates. It's not actually literally happening in real time, right? So so you know, you might have a situation where uh, this you know, transfers right away and this and this gets it right away. And when it shows up, it immediately starts crafting. Or maybe this thing transfers a second later, it arrives here, but then this hasn't updated yet. And then it starts crafting maybe a second and a half later. So it's been two, two and a half seconds since this process started. You're already, if you tried to set this at 135, you're gonna be late. And what you can't allow is any crafting of an item's response. So this timer is responsible for the AK and the mask. You can't have a mask or an AK still crafting when this timer ends and it switches to this timer because this timer might try to put stuff into the crafter. So it's very, very critical that these timers run longer than you need them to craft up to three items. And what I found is that if you set it up to where it's, you know, it's, so it's 135, I have this set up to, to 180. So in my testing, if you have items or at least one item, so let's say one was 45 and one was 30, you're gonna base this off of the 45 one, right? Uh, if that's, in this case, 180 seems to work with things that are 45 seconds long to craft and you're trying to keep three of them potentially at any given time. Uh, the MP5, which is the third one over here. Let's see, let's look at that one. That's the MP5. Its pair up here is actually the rocket launcher. And the rocket launcher takes 60 seconds. This takes 30 seconds. But when I originally set this up, I set this up to be for two 30 second items. So I did 150, because that seemed to work pretty good. 30, 60, 90, and then just a bunch extra time in case weird stuff happens. Uh, so the way I, I was able to insert an item into this without increasing that, that 150 to say 210 or 220, is that instead of asking for three of these at any given time, I only ask for one, so two total, one here and one in the buffer box. So you can see how, that's what I mean by relative, is that uh, everything you're crafting is relative to the other item. And so whatever you set that timer to, it just has to be able to handle whatever it is that's trying to craft, if that makes sense. And so just remember that every setup that you do in this is gonna be unique. So you might have to play with this, uh, but the absolute tip is, when in doubt, if you have problems or you notice something finishes crafting right before this swaps over, uh, just add more time. When in doubt, add more time. You can always back it off a little bit and tune it a little bit uh, if it's too long for you. Uh, but, but more time is better than not enough time. So the last thing we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna fire it up. Uh, remember that we're starting this up from scratch. There's nothing in here. This thing is empty. Uh, this is empty. The only items we have are the pre-crafted items that have to be there. Make sure that your industrial crafters are on. The system doesn't have anything to turn them on because it's unnecessary, just leave them on. Uh, so make sure those are on, all these are on, we're good to go. And we're gonna, we're gonna start it. So just a note that for some reason, this uh, check conveyor, which is incredibly important, although not during startup, uh, if you, for some reason, choose this timer to start, it won't actually start, even though it's being told to start in the game. It won't start for like one or two, basically a loop. And I don't know why it does that, but if you start it over here on the left one, no problem, it runs every time like it's supposed to. So if you were to start it here, no worries, it'll correct itself in a loop once it loops around. Uh, but you know, I'm gonna start it uh, where it's supposed to just so we can see how it runs. So I'm gonna fire this up right here. And now we're gonna talk about uh, what is going on. So this thing is running and you'll notice we started on the blue one, which is these down here, which is the 10, 21, 31, 41 uh, frequency set. So if you come over here, that's this top one because that's 10 and that's 10 on those two top ones. If you if you look here, we'll see if I can get it on there, but if you look at the on, it has one coming, the off has nothing. All the other ones have nothing on the on, 
but they have something coming in on the off. This one has a little extra because there's some extra voltage that we didn't care about. Uh, but each one of these, it's hard to get in there and look, but each one of these has a, a value coming in on the off to keep them off if they had been on in the first place. And that's how this one will turn off. Once we swap to this one down here, because remember they go up. Once we swap to this one down here, these three will receive an off signal from their off receivers because the next set has, you know, on for just this one, but off for all the rest. Same thing down here. And so what it's doing is it is trying to fill that buffer box right now. So it's gonna take whatever it can, and it might have even pulled some all the way through, these made it through. Uh, it's gonna fill these up to have your three, or your two items in here, plus the one in here. And the way it does that is every time, you know, like I said, the system is reactive. So it's taking from here, because this is saying, you know, do I have the two that I asked for in this box? No, obviously, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one. And then the system, as soon as it takes one, it activates this delay circuit, which again is now gone after, as of this beta one, it's no longer in use in the second one, but something is there to replace it. But the point is this thing activates this, which then transfers the recipe over into the industrial crafter, and then it crafts another one. And it's just gonna keep doing that until it, uh, until it has two in here and one in here. And so here we'll do one more, cause see it took it. And now it should bring in, you'll see it. There it goes. And it brings it into here. There it goes, starts crafting. And now at this point, because we have two in here and because we're crafting this final one right here, it's gonna stop. It's not gonna do another one until this timer, until it, it comes up. So we're about three quarters of the way done. So we're looking pretty good on that. Um, you know, these might be a little excessive. You could probably back this off in time, but really 180 seconds, if you think about it, you know, 180, 180, 150, 150, that's not a crazy long loop. Uh, and so that's minutes in the game that this thing is fully cycling your stuff. Um, so it's gonna, it's gonna do, once it crafts this one here, also the same thing down here, we're making uh, AKs down here, uh, cause now we have the two of each, there they are. And we're about to have one in each one. And so once it does, it's no longer gonna try and transfer one because it has what it wants. And so now the system is just waiting for this timer, which that's pretty good. And keep in mind that it did it did craft technically four because of that first startup. So you probably don't need quite 180, but you could play with that. Uh, as soon as, it's, as it transfers over, what's about to do, you're gonna notice this check conveyor is gonna turn on. And what that does, and we'll see that, you'll see the timer on the left, it's gonna elapse, and then it's gonna swap to the timer on the far right on the loop. And as soon as it does, it's going to initiate that check conveyor. There it goes. This is checking for, you know, I want six in that box. So it's saying, well, I don't have six in that box, so I'm gonna see if I, if I can get it. It's taking it from the buffer box. So now it's taking everything it can, anything available from the buffer box, it is gonna take and it is gonna put in this box. And so the reason there's a check there, the reason I don't let the system constantly pull from that buffer box is that if a player were to say, you know, right now we're, again, we're, we've moved on to these bottom ones. So now we're crafting the scopes and we're crafting the Python. And so what it's gonna do is it's going to, it only checks for things that are missing in this box at the very beginning of each cycle. And the reason for that is that let's say you or one of your teammates comes in here and says, oh, I need an AK and a mask or whatever. And they take it, but they take it right at the, like, let's say five seconds before the end of a timer. Without that check that check conveyor, the system would then react to you and attempt to craft you an AK, but at five seconds, there's no way for it to craft an AK in the last five seconds of this timer before you start this timer, and the system has other responsibilities now. It's not, it's not trying to craft AKs, and it shouldn't be crafting AKs when it's in the cycle of, say, the, the scope and the Python. So, that check conveyor just puts a, it basically protects the system from you, the player, from accidentally taking something at the wrong time, which is pretty important. And it essentially means you can take things from this box whenever you want. It doesn't matter because this thing's going to update only at the beginning of a loop every time you cross over from a loop. So now that we've covered that, uh, I'm gonna just go over here and kind of just give a brief explanation of what this is doing as far as right here. The whole purpose of this timer delay array that I made that I cover in the part two crafting module video is that for whatever reason, sometimes these uh, will 
they will they will double pull. They'll send an extra signal, and you'll see it because this thing will run twice in succession really quick. And they're just meant to protect the uh, the input conveyor from being told to accidentally put a second set of materials into the into the input when it doesn't need it. And so that just protects against that. And sometimes you'll see if you watch it'll it'll say one of these will activate but then right after it's done it'll activate again uh and this just sort of protects it because timers can't be double activated that's why i used it again in version two this whole array is actually gone um so it's much simpler now but uh in the beta version this was just sort of the first idea on how to how to deal with that and so at this point i'm just going to check on the progress we're going to see how we're doing it is uh running just fine i'm just going to sort of stick these around, do a little bit of organizing as we go, just so we can see where it's at. So you can see kind of what it's accomplished so far with the loops that it's completed. Um, also note that in the, the box, it keeps, you know, it doesn't select certain items. This thing will empty that box if everything in here is missing. Also, it, you know, what, what it needs is everything in that box. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is actually just position myself right here and I'll just do a time ramp or a speed ramp. Um, uh, just so we can see this thing run all the way through, but you'll see it. We're gonna leave it here until it fills the box, and then we'll check the box, make sure that everything that we that I asked it to do was successfully completed, and to make sure that the system has has set itself in a position where uh, it's ready to react to player involvement with the source box. All right, let's take a look to see where we're at. Uh, oh yeah, we are done. Actually, let's make sure that everything I crafted is there. So we'll just swap all this out. There we go. And there you go. So that worked perfectly. Um, so that did six of each item as we had set over here in the check conveyor. It made everything I asked for. And up here I should have, if this all went correctly, I should have two of everything. And it looks like, oh, it might be missing the, there's one more item that it needs to craft which should be coming from here once it gets around uh, to, let's see, in two cycles it'll hit this. So I came, a, like, I got here a tiny, tiny, tiny bit early uh, because it hasn't had a chance to craft the the uh, last the last uh, rocket launcher. But, but it looks like yeah, as soon as it gets past that, as soon as it comes around, it'll make one more, and that's technically the last, uh, but it will do it. So now what it's doing is it's just scanning. So now we're at a point where we've crafted everything minus one rocket launcher, and that's not surprising because the rocket launcher, it only does one at a time, but I still asked for six in that box and one in the buffer. And so that's a good example of, you know, if you do something like that, it will take longer for it to catch up to you, but once it's caught up to you, it can only replace the rocket launcher one at a time or two at a time technically. Uh, so, you know, just be aware of that. I mean, you could choose to just increase the timer so that the rocket launcher has ample time and can craft uh, two at a time like everything else. Uh, but that's just sort of a personal choice as to how long, you know, these, this is the cycle time, 180, 180, 150, 150. So there it goes, it just swapped over to a new one. So now it should be uh, on the bottom. And so the next one up is going to be this one and then it'll craft that final it'll well, essentially what it'll do is it'll it'll steal this one put it in the buffer box craft another one to replace it with and then the system's just going to go dormant uh until you take stuff so uh, like i said before you can take things out of this and it's not going to react to you until it hits a new cycle and that check reacts to to what you got going on again that's by design it keeps the system safe from taking items too late during a cycle uh so you know, that's pretty much it. The last thing I'm going to do, I've just got this sort of calibration tips list over here uh, that I put together as kind of like a, you know, a troubleshooting and major ideas here. And the tip number one is, of course, set the time interval for each scan based on the longest crafting time for items in that scan. So, you know, if you had an AK and a syringe, clearly the AK is 45 seconds and the syringe, the syringe is, you know, seconds in a tier three. Uh, so you'd want to set your timer based on the AK, not the syringe. Uh, add extra time to scans to account for inconsistencies in conveyor transfers, industrial crafter start time, etc. Uh, that's what I talked about, meaning that the game has up, you know, it updates every uh, every so many seconds, five seconds, and so you might not start crafting exactly on time. So you can't just do exactly what three would be. You'd have to add some buffer to that. 
um, scans must be able to craft the single industrial crafter slot and two buffer box slots before cycling over. This is based on, except for, of course, the, as we talked about, except for the, the uh, rocket launcher in this particular example. Uh, but essentially all that's saying is that uh, the scan needs to be able to, you have to be able to craft three items at the worst case scenario before that timer elapses. Uh, and then four, as I said before, when in doubt, add more time to scan timers. Crafting must be completed before a new scan begins. So again, if you have trouble and things are crafting late or they're not showing up in time, just add more time because that will, you know, depending on what you did, since every setup is going to be unique, uh, you may have to adjust this and maybe a, maybe consider just starting high on the time, see how well they do and remove time as you go until you hone it into uh, whatever it is you have set up. But you can kind of use these benchmarks, 45, you know, 345 seconds, uh, 180 seems to work good. 30 second items times three, 150 seems to work good, right? So you can kind of use those as benchmarks. So if you had three 60 second items, you know, it's gonna be 200 and some plus, is it what you're gonna wanna do for three? You're just gonna have to kind of test it and see, you know, what happens. So here we go. We actually just got to the uh, final, um, there it goes. It's taking that final rocket launcher. And so it's done that. It's now gonna bring in the items needed for the rocket launcher. And there it goes. It's now replacing it. And now after this one, the system will truly be dormant unless something is taken out of here. And if I take stuff out of here, uh, the system's only gonna know about it at the beginning of a new cycle so that it has time to craft whatever it is uh, I stole from there. So, and assuming it's on that particular cycle. So if I take something that's not on the next cycle, it'll hit it when it gets to its particular cycle. Uh, with the pairs that are associated with these timers. So, uh, you know, hey, keep on the lookout for the next version. Um, I've made some pretty sweet updates uh, that are gonna simplify this, especially power requirements have dropped quite a bit with version two. So I'm gonna try and get that video out as soon as possible. I think version two will be a lot more accessible. So that folks is just about all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. Otherwise you can get me on my discord. See you later.